Hey, what's up YouTube? How's it going? Long time no see. It's been a little while since our last update. I know, I'm sorry about that. Uh, we've had some pretty big life-changing events happen here at home. My wife and I actually had a little baby boy. So that's, that's huge. Uh, we've been adjusting to that and getting comfortable again. But I have still been able to make a bunch of progress on the game, which I'm really excited to share with you today. I just wanted to take a quick second before I get into that to actually thank everybody who participated in the playtest that we had on Steam a couple months ago, and especially those of you that actually, you know, were so generous with your time and submitted feedback and bugs. Like, my gosh, the game is in such a better place now because of all the effort that you guys put in, and I just really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, so now let's get into the video. I always like to start off with a quick sculpt, especially like in this case, I don't have a concept or anything, so I'm sort of sketching in 3D and come and discovering the design of the character as I'm trying to build it out in 3D. You can see here, I, I keep stretching and pulling the mesh. I'm using DynaMesh to continuously add more topology when I need it. If you were to look at the wireframe though, it would be a total mess, but you know, it doesn't really matter at this point. At this stage, I'm also not terribly concerned about working clean or anything. I, I really just want to go fast. I tried to limit myself to about five minutes in real time for each of these sculpts. And working this way allows me to explore a lot more designs than if I were to try to make anything more, like more refined or polished. I can explore all kinds of all kinds of ideas without really having to invest a lot of time. So it's no big deal if one of these doesn't work out, which actually there were a few that didn't, I can throw it away and I haven't really lost too much time in that exploration. One thing I'm also trying to keep in mind while I'm doing this is the aesthetic of my game is generally like, I'm, I'm sort of trying to think of like, okay, what would everything look like if it were made of balloons? So I want all of these shapes to be round and thick. I don't want any elements that look too fragile on any of my characters. So basically that means no sharp edges on anything. Another important thing I, I had to keep in mind while I was doing this and the other 15 uh, sculpts was that all of the characters need to work on the same body type. So I couldn't stray too far off of that, that body that I started from in the very beginning so that I could reuse all the animations that I did for the base character and just try to make the most use of, of what I had already made. So that is a quick sculpt. Next, we'll move on to Retopo. Now we're gonna take that really rough sketch that we just made and try to turn it into something that we can actually use. The next stage after this is to go into Maya and make our high poly. In this retopology stage, what it's all about is kind of setting ourselves up for success by making us a really nice clean mesh that we can work from. I'm using this program called TopoGun. It's really specially designed just for this purpose. It keeps every vertice or you see those dots, every, every dot that I'm placing, it keeps those stuck to that rough sculpt that we made. So I can just focus on the topology. And it's, it's actually a really fun stage. I, you can kind of just zone out and, and just place some dots, man. Yeah, it's really cool. So here I'm drawing those lines. Those are really neat too, because you draw a line and it will try to create a tube over those lines. Those are awesome on like arms and legs. Yeah, there's not too much to this stage. I, I'm really just trying to get, make a, make a usable mesh or like a, a more usable mesh off of that rough sculpt. Because like I said, the wireframe of that rough sculpt is kind of a big mess. And after, you know, retopoing for a bit, um, this is kind of where I end up. This is plenty to work from in Maya. Now I can take that cleaner mesh that we made and really start to try to nail down the look. So here I'm taking an element of a hat and I'm starting to add thickness to it. Like I mentioned before, I want everything in my game to feel like it's made of balloons. So if you look at the edges here, I'm trying to make those feel nice and rounded and sort of inflated. I imagine if like if you pushed anything in my game like with your finger, it would squeak. You'd get that kind of balloon animal squeak. You can see I'm adding extra bevels and edge loops to to those thicker meshes. That's how I'm controlling how round or or sharp one of those edges is going to be. This is the final stage of my high poly mesh. This is where I'm going to spend a lot of time making sure everything is just right. I probably will add a few more details uh, as I continue working on this. I also like to add, start adding color at this stage too, to help me see relationships between different shapes. This is like the real final stage where I can sort of focus in on every little pixel and, and try to make it just perfect. So I'll spend a lot of time on this and I did this for each of those 16 characters and then we start to end up with, with this. This is the final product. 
So here you can see our lineup of different kids uh, with a bunch of different goofy outfits. I've added some details that we didn't have in those original sculpts, but they're basically the same models that we roughed in, just refined a bit more. From there, I build a lower res in-game mesh and I start this process called UVing, which is basically tearing the 3D model apart and laying it out into 2D space. So on the left, you can see my 3D viewport. On the right, you can see the UV editor. And this is really important because this is how we're gonna translate those 2D textures onto a 3D model. And these textures kind of end up looking like this. You can see in the bottom left, his jacket, the bottom right, his jeans, and in the top, his hat and hair. And this is how it's translated from 2D to 3D. These are all fully playable and textured and ready to go. So let's go check those out. All right, and these are what the characters look like in game. So here, I'm just gonna flip through them real quick so you get kind of an idea of what they look like. We have eight boys and eight girls. So you've got a pretty diverse cast here and something for everybody, hopefully. And you can see, yep, they're all fully playable. You can run around, do all kinds of stuff. Even a banana, even a banana, why not? Another cool thing I did was add this little spring joint that you see bouncing above my character's head. And with that, I was able to add all that bounce that you see in her ponytails or any of the other characters that have accessories on top of their head, like antenna or anything. It's cool, it actually responds to the player's movement and adds um, some nice secondary movement. Pretty big fundamental changes to my ability system. I've completely removed cooldowns and replaced it with an energy-based system. So there's a cost associated with every ability and you have, to, you have to expend the energy resource to use it. And you gain, you gain energy by attacking enemies. Weapons accrue energy at different rates, but here you can see if I try to cast this ability right now, it's going to pop a little logo above my head, and you can see that, that the bar here fills up with yellow to the first two cells, and there's a little number two here telling me that I need two energy bars to actually use that ability. So here, let's go and we can hit this training dummy who is an, who's flagged as an enemy, and that will fill up my energy, and now I can use this new ability. This one is an AoE a uh, slow ability, so if any enemy walks into it, they'll be slowed temporarily. And I also have a poison version that does sort of the same thing. If any enemy walks into it, they will take damage over time. They'll be poisoned. And you probably noticed I'm shooting these like big flashy projectiles. Those are also new. These are slow moving heat sinking projectiles, so I can even aim it over here. And it's going to try to find the closest enemy and hit it. I'm gonna use these on uh, enemies, my upgraded shooter enemies. Later in the game, they're gonna shoot these at you instead of the normal projectiles, just to make it a little bit harder to play against. And then last but not least, I added this other ability that is sort of like a split shot. You fire it out and then a little distance away, it splits into three different projectiles. I think they kind of look like uh, dodgeballs, so that's kind of what I'm going with. A little quality of life thing I added to was now candy, when you get close, will just automatically pick itself up. You'll notice like it kind of gets sucked in when I get close, um, just to make it a little bit easier to pick it up and not have to like waste all the time going, going right on top of a piece of candy before you get it. Right now it's not doing that on health yet, but I think, I think this feature has been a success so far, so I'm pretty sure it'll be, it'll be nice on health too. So I think I'm gonna add it. I also did some more work to try to celebrate the end of a level a little bit more. So I made this like mission complete screen that will sort of give you a recap of how everyone's performed and what you've done in the level. So here you can see the banana guy killed some, but the cowgirl cow killed more and she collected more candy. All right, that's the video. I hope you liked it. Those were sort of the highlights of the things that I worked on for the last couple months. 
Uh, there's still a bunch of other little things that I had to skip out on. I'm hoping that the there won't be as much time between videos for the next one, but with a little baby boy right now, uh, my time is pretty precious. It's hard to get a couple hours together to edit a video. So if you really wanna follow along and get smaller updates, please check out the Discord community. I will, I'm gonna do my best to try to update there more often. And yeah, that's it. I will see you in the next video. All right, bye.